Hello, this is CTMU Self-Improvement Part 2, and the title of this video is All Eyes on God. And the, the idea of this video is essentially that you want to have constant reminders of God throughout the day, because one of the major problems is that the you can think of, obviously, you know, there are theists and atheists, but the problem which plagues plagues both of them um often is complacency is not actually being constantly reminded and striving towards higher and higher reminded of god and striving towards higher and higher levels of being and this is why you'll often hear um charges of hypocrisy leveled at religious folks so the idea is i've constructed a prayer regimen which is not not supposed to replace liturgical prayer but to to complement it that you so i have a brace a bracelet here and it has five blue and white beads and 11 black beads and oh and so essentially you have five you want to have five slogans or mantras and it the actual content of them doesn't really matter but just that remind you of god kind of refo re recenter you you towards this and i'm going to get to the theoretical basis of this later in the video but so my five i have let all let all my being praise the lord who is clothed in splendor and majesty wrapped in light as in a garment unfolding the heavens like a curtain um psalm 104 um champion the weak and the orphan save uphold the downtrodden and destitute rescue the weak and the needy save them from the grip of the wicked how vast your works O lord your designs are beyond our grasp um and the and those three are all from the book of psalms by king david um the lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation that's from moses's song song at the sea in the book of exodus and from psalm 27 it's mine is the faith that i shall surely see the lord's goodness in the land of the living hope in the lord and be strong take courage hope in the lord so you say you say that you go through those five those five and you say that 11 times throughout the day and you can have and i'm gonna have a and i have a you know a, a like very small elastic band which you can progress it's like a um east eastern orthodox christians it's similar to that it has they have like a a prayer bead which you progress down which reminds you to say uh daily num daily numbers of prayer usually the jesus prayer lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner but the idea is that if you have but the the theoretical basis of the of this practice uh, which is why i'm recommending it to you is that you can is that god is, is that god is not only you know a sovereign entity which is you know totally divorced from real from your day-to-day -day, day-to-day experience or ought not to be you know is it you were when we're referring to the god described in the cognitive theoretic model of the universe ctm you were not thinking about a you know the god of spinoza or of brooke spinoza or albert einstein where it's essentially just you know the the laws which which govern the universe and it's and its structure but we're at but the important part for the purposes of self-improvement is that god is a a telic entity which means that there's that god is by virtue of telic recursion as the global operator descriptor as the primary teller of reality is that you is that God is generating timelines for how you could optimally interact with the universe at every moment. And every time you stumble and fall and make a mistake, that doesn't actually matter to the central premise, which is that God is continually generating that timeline through future to past causation, that he's mapping your that this is actually the essence of self-improvement is that he's mapping 
your idea the ideal future the ideal life you could live and there are many possibilities within that but he's mapping the ideal life you can live to your present state and you have the free choice you have the free will to either take that path or to ignore it but if you're not attuned to god's presence in your life to god as a personal and sovereign entity then you will never be able to discern what it or it will be much more difficult to discern what is the optimal path so and this this might not be an immediate transformation this could be months or or years it's a it's a lifetime process of communion with god of the mapping between your striving and god's being which becomes that redemptive force but the point remains the same is that if you have those constant reminders of god that your being is actually going to be in concordance with god's telos with the both ethical and creative living that the truthful perception manifested in the universe which is characteristic of law of the logos which is a an aspect of god which is and a generalization of the perception of individual secondary tellers which is humans um which is obviously subservient to the primary teller who is god is that so if you have that constant reminder if that's the only this is you you know if you've watched um jordan peterson's lectures he defines god and this isn't entirely correct but it's useful as the highest value um and anything which you have as your highest value is your god and so this is part of what it means to have no no other gods before before me is one of the commandments in the in the torah is to have no other gods before god and part of that what that means is not only you know i'm not worshiping apollo or zeus part of what that means is that i'm not you know worshiping worldly ends and worldly ends or putting up any other values other than the highest possible value of you know and part of part of the value of god is love and truth and goodness and beauty and all of these things so you're actually manifesting all of those and so when you have that constantly in mind there's this telic recursion and you start to make better decisions you you know maybe tomorrow let's say you have the decision you can either study for a test or you can go on Pornhub so if you don't if you have you know your immediate gratification as your highest value you're going to choose the latter whereas if you have God as your highest value you're going to look across all of your strata of identity you're going in in this applies to any decision you're going to look at your individual how your how your decision affects not only your individual level of identity your family your community and possibly all the way up you know your country your humankind etc and ultimately your highest level of identity who is god because we're all local images of god is that if you look and you're going to look and see that and you're going to look at not only those identities in the present so not only the gratification of all those things at the present time but also at all at all time scales you're going to see you know what's good for me now what's good for me in a month what's good for me in a year what's good for me in 5 years and that what's good for humankind in, right now what's good for me it what's good for humankind in 5 years what's good for god how can how can i be a warrior for god's victory on earth and you start to make every decision based on this and this is the the crux of self improvement is really not not even related to the self except at the basic level it's related to all of your higher levels of identity that you if you keep your eye on god keep your eye on the prize which is the redemption of the world if you're 
if yours is truly the faith that you shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living, then that becomes a redemptive force which animates every single action that you take. It's the perfect blend of love and wisdom which characterizes everything that you do. And that is what fundamentally, and because it's self-improvement in the broadest sense and not in, in the narrow sense of, you know, I'm going to do what's good for me now, or I'm going to, you know, make a lot of money or bang a lot of chicks or whatever, but you're actually striving towards that highest value. And so everything that you do, you become a warrior for God. Your presence can, your presence is a redemptive force and that there is the mapping between your striving and God's being, which ends up becoming a singularity of redemption, which is eventually what in, uh, with a, in an ensemble of people like that, you know far fewer than people would imagine of truly, you know, of truly noble people is what it takes to redeem a fallen world. Um, there's the idea in the, that the rabbis take from the story of Sodom and Gomorrah from Abraham's reckoning with God is that all it takes to redeem a, to redeem a, you know, wicked and wayward civilization is 10 is 10 or so righteous righteous and upright people who are constantly striving for not only what's good but what's better that when you when you stop when you stop striving you stop when you stop striving it stops getting better um, so people often talk about the hedonic treadmill of, you know, I want to get more and more pleasure. And ultimately that leads to, to no fulfillment because you have to keep running to stay in the same place. And the same thing is true with what we'll call the teleological treadmill. But you keep running and you stay in the same place and you you're keep going, going higher. And even though you might not feel this, but everything that you've run counts. So it's almost... As opposed to a treadmill, it's more like a sprint on ground that you're that all of the terrain which you've covered still still applies and that still can continually become a redemptive force. You know, someone could could watch this in principle and I don't know if there will still be YouTube or humans or whatever in a hundred years and that they will could benefit from this hypothetically. But so, and that you are an agent of the light which redeems the universe. May the light shine forth in the darkness. Let the do darkness comprehend it. Um, let all shine forth. Let the darkness shine. Let the light shine. May the peace of our Father in heaven be upon us, be upon you, and, um, and upon everyone. Like and subscribe. Peace.